in those beginning times there was light. The light was beautiful and encompassed all of existence, for its majesty was absolute. Yet because of the light there was also darkness, for even the brilliance must cast shadow unto the firmament. The darkness was envious of the radiance of the light and sought to imitate everything it beheld in an attempt to grasp even a fraction of that glory for itself. To no avail, the darkness became frustrated beyond reason, and thus war eternal was brought into existence. Annals of the Gods, Guardians, 121. Being an omniscient entity was not without its drawbacks. Kale sighed with frustration as he pondered upon the inevitable backlash the other gods would have in response to his newest ideas of what sentient life could be like. His vision of a noble people, humanity as he would call them, was filled with the light of his being and would undoubtedly draw enmity from his fellow deities. In particular, he foresaw Legion becoming unreasonably incensed at this new creation for the world of life. Legion is the surly god, precluded from anything that could be considered good due to his nature as the ruler of the underworld and the realms of darkness. Not unusual was it for Legion to raise any number of abominations up in imitation of the other's creations. Instructing the Bihari and haunt the new forms of life and draw ever more souls into his own dominion through terror and death. A truly jealous god he is, and showed that side of his nature every time the god saw fit to bring a new creation into existence. Kale foresaw demons being raised up from the world of darkness to plague humanity and twist their natures into something neither holy of the light nor holy of the darkness. He accepted this despite his misgivings. For existence requires balance in all things, and perhaps humanity was required to be balanced as well as if they were to have true life. He created them with a variety of appearances and genetic identities, hoping that their differences would allow more freedom to choose their own paths in life, a necessity as he saw it. Given that previous creations seemed too perfect to have full measures of happiness as they went through the motions of living, potential for flaws would leave potential for personal growth, for something to strive for, develop towards. Therein lay the beauty of existence. For to attain what previously seemed unreachable is the hallmark of greatness, and all that perceives such growth would fain define it within themselves. Such was the way of Gale's thoughts, and so it was that by his direction humanity came to be, an initially fragile race of creatures innocent beyond mortal imagination. They wandered about the lands in a trance, for they knew not from whence they came. Soon, Legion beheld the innocence of these new sentients and was enraged at their flawed perfection. He sought to seduce as many to the ways of darkness as he could, and destroy the rest to claim their souls for his own devices. Humanity became tainted, corrupted by the reach of shadows creeping among them from the god of the underworld. Violence, malcontent, avarice, hatred, and sorrows rose within the hearts of the once pure humans, and they began to separate themselves according to perceived differences. They grew cunning. Competition between the groups of people promoting those with the most intelligent and strongest members to the forefront of their new societies. Crude weapons emerged and dishonest strategies employed in efforts to gain the upper hand. Dale looked upon his newest creation and was filled with sadness, for what he had foreseen had come to pass, yet a glimmer of hope remained for in the midst of the chaos came a ray of light shining from within each human. The negativity released by the taint opened their hearts to the opposite emotions, for as Kale knew, existence requires balance in all things. Gentleness, contentment, generosity, love, and joy rose from the discord between the conflicting peoples, and Kale saw that this brought even greater potential than he had initially predicted. It would prove to be the greatest battle the humans would ever fight, not for their lives, but for their souls, to find their own balance between light and dark, and attain true growth for themselves without his guidance. Legion looked upon the now peaceful humans and harbored his darkest portent yet within his core. Sippering in these thoughts, his heart grew even darker, for he was plotting the complete destruction of Kale's new people, and so the shadows went from being cast from the light to being utterly devoid of spawning new horrors to desecrate what they could not truly reach. A devil was made from the manifestation of Legion's ill will towards the light, a Ron he was named, and terrible was his likeness to behold. His purpose was unspoken and unbidden he left to carry out his master's will, convert or destroy the meek, obliterate the strong, and leave no human to touch the light again, leading hordes of lesser demons in his wake. Ron swept through the portals of the underworld to his great conquest driving before him all that beheld the terror of his gaze. Wraithful in sloth, deadly in battle, Ron slew even those he had convinced to give into the darkness within their hearts. Humanity faced its second great peril, extinction at the hands of the demons created by Legion. Kale had foreseen that humanity was not saved after the light emerged within them. 
and as Legion wrought in secret his champion of darkness, so too did Kale conceal his next move. He wished to create another new kind of life form, immortal to the passage of time and safe from the touches of disease and darkness. The Citadel was made for these new beings, and they were imbued with the light of their creator and charged with the safekeeping of humanity. A great host of protectors came forth from the will of the light and existed solely to protect them. A citadel was created in the world, intended to be a beacon of hope to those that wished to conquer their darkness. Such beauty was embodied by this place that any with the honor of glimpsing it spoke in hushed tones, awed by the glory and majesty of the light that was ever present in all aspects of the construction. Kale caused this to become the dwelling place and command center of his servants, which he appropriately titled the Guardians, and he consigned to them the eternal task of watching over the world. Protection of humanity and of the light was the foremost and only true orders he ever issued to the Guardians for he had created the first of them to have a mind of his own in order to properly lead. An archangel by the name of Zero was the first and most powerful of the guardians, endowed with all admirable qualities possible in beings that walk the mortal planes. Wisdom had Zero in abundance, and shrewd was he in matters of strategy. Strength came naturally to him, for his power was that of the light. Compassion and mercy remained within him, yet ruthless was he to those that embraced the darkness and the teachings of chaos. Capacity for leadership and the strength to see Kale's will carried out made Zero the perfect commander of the forces of light, and he would need all of this and more to survive in the coming war. Arcs of light soar through the air, crackling with power. Tendrils of shadow read the combatants in a strange fog as reality is constantly torn asunder and pieced back together from one instance to the next. The amount of energy being discharged is unfathomable, infinite destruction and rebirth occurring repeatedly. A bright city burns with dark fire in places, beams of light gathering, lancing off towards the hordes in intermittent flashes, cleansing large swaths in the nightmarish battlefield. Energy weapons and magical casting is not the only form of combat in this sort of war. However, contorted abominations roam from target to target, seeming to be purely comprised of horrific appendages meant to wound, maim, and kill anything in their path. Tooth and claw and razor spines ravage the forces of light whose proud warriors defend their position with fierce eyes and indomitable spirits. These warriors wield every sort of weapon imaginable. Energy projectors, capable of firing purified light, spears and swords and hybrid pole arms made from a strange kind of metal. Even spellcasters and other magic users can be seen, all struggling to repel the enemy that seeks their destruction. A great shockwave goes out from the middle of the battle, its epicenter originating from a glowing figure that had become separated from the main host of its comrades. Alone, the figure stood once more to face the wolves. Alone, the figure defied death and shadow and darkness. Alone. Zero praised the light as he fought, uttering words of benediction for every malformed and twisted human he slew as an act of mercy to end their torment. There seemed to be no end to them, and no matter how well he and his guardians fought, they were becoming overwhelmed by sheer numbers and the mind-numbing exhaustion at the beginning to set in. He called to his second a nail to set up a perimeter around the citadel to prevent any hellspawn from access to the inner cloisters, wrecking havoc there. The nail nodded his affirmation and rushed to see the task done swiftly. For the interior of the citadel housed a large gathering of pure light and served as a source of power for the guardians. Turning his attention immediately back to fighting, Zero struck out with his elaborate spear, thrusting, whirling, sweeping, lightly stepping across the once green hills surrounding the outer gates. Zero became intertwined with his bows in the dance of death, one move fluidly transitioning into the next flawless. The exhaustion that was beginning to show itself in the forms of his companions seemed to be entirely absent from him. As he appeared to gain in power and grace, the more the combat continued. Cleverly, a large group of twisted horrors managed to separate a guardian from the rest. Zero took a brief glance to witness his youngest sister, Suruko, begin to be brutally torn apart by her misshapen attackers. He averted his gaze after only a moment. She was lost the instant she became separated in such a battle, and he had many more pressing matters to attend to. He promptly ended several of those matters with a blistering salvo from the elegant sidearm he wielded in his left hand, unerringly accurate and deadly with every shot. Stoically, he pressed his momentary advantage and brought the fight to the enemy, dashing into their weakening battle lines and applying pressure at a critical moment. Nail returned from the setting of the guard to join him, and together they broke the habit circle. The sun with their combined feet. 
In the midst of the confusion, the once human armies fell back under the onslaught from the two powerful guardians. Taking a moment of respite, a nail knelt and looked up at his elder brother with a mixture of admiration and sorrow. He wondered just how powerful the white had made Zero. For even with the latest surge of fighting, he felt oddly that the commander was holding back much in reserve. Zero returned the look with pride at how his family had fought thus far. In particular, the valor and nail had shown in carrying out his orders. As they shared a brief time of rest, they felt a measure of peace settle upon them, washing over the gore-soaked hilltop they were on. Zero had no time to react when a wiggly barbed spine exploded through his brother's torso, spattering the earth with lifeblood and entrails as it retracted abruptly to maximize the damage. A cry of anguish erupted, unbidden from his very soul as his second-in-command crumpled to the ground in shock. As Zero looked up in rage, he beheld a massive force of new enemies arrayed before them. Legion had sent his chaos demons for Ron to send against the Citadel. Laughing maniacally, the demon that had impaled a nail shook the blood from the razor-sharp protrusion and held it to a jagged stump on its head. Horrifically, there was a broiling of darkness around the area, and the spike was fused back onto the body of the creature, sprouting new barbs upon its restoration turning its head slightly to the rear. It released an ear-splitting sound of triumph, somewhere between a roar and a bellow. Zero involuntarily followed the movement of the beast and beheld the sight that caused his blood to freeze within his veins. Aron, Harbringer of Doom, had arrived. Mortally wounded, a nail raised his head with difficulty. Gasping from the effort, desperately he clutched at his brother's arm to gain his attention. Soundlessly, his mouth worked in an attempt to relay his dying words to Zero, but it was a few precious seconds before he succeeded. A nail implored his commander to initiate a melding, a process that would merge the life force of the brothers together. Reluctantly, Zero tore his gaze away from the outline of Iran in the near distance, striding off past their hill to the outer gates. Time was short, for he was losing a nail quickly and the Harbringer was closing the distance between himself and the Citadel. Making the decision, Zero grasped forearms with a nail and they raised their voices in an incantation to blend their light together, speaking the phrases simultaneously to channel the energy required. The advance of the Chaos Demons to finish them off was halted in awe and terror at the blaze of glory sent up as a beacon into the sky as the brothers began to merge. A nail's body disappeared entirely, absorbed by the Archangel once the spell was completed. A pulse of light went out from the crest of the hill and washed over the entire area. Zero felt an incredible amount of energy course through his entire being, and the demons saw his form suffused with an otherworldly glow. Cowering in the face of this renewed threat, they opened their maws in defiance and charged headlong to attack. From the surrounding hills outside the gates, many of the guardians that were embroiled in combat with the remainder of the malformed humans felt their exhaustion lift as the light emitted from Zero and a nail's melding passed through them. Invigorated, they managed to exterminate their foes and rushed to join their commander. Raging themselves defensively around Zero, they moved as one to clash with the oncoming horde of Chaos Demons that repositioned their lines between the Guardians and the Citadel to buy time for Iran and a massive contingent of their number to enter the series of gates leading to the heart of the city. Zero branches his weapons tirelessly. Confident now with his increase in power, disregarding his own safety, the Archangel spoke words of judgment as he dealt death blows every few seconds. Felling their enemies swiftly, the Guardians punched a large hole through the disarrayment of the Chaos Demons, all the way to the entrance through the outer walls. But their sally was not without great cost, for the demons were not meek by any meaning of the word. Scores of Zero's brethren were savagely slain by the horde, and others turned without being ordered to cover his entrance into the Citadel grounds. A small task force detached from the main body of the rear guard to accompany him, but halted in wonder as he turned back to face the still sizable remnants of the enemy. Features set in a mask of grief and righteous anger, he holds his, his side arm and raises his left arm, palm facing outward at head height. A soft glow began to emanate from the center of his hand, gathering his strength as he began to stride towards the demon. After only a few paces, the glow had risen sharply into a sharp glare, and all that were near shielded their eyes from fear of becoming blinded. Zero shouted a single word, Perish! and cast the light from him in a great arc towards the largest grouping of enemies. Upon contact with the first demon's form, it blazed incandescent and passed through the enemy, vaporizing it entirely. Zero brought his hand downwards in a sharp, decisive motion, and the light detonated soundlessly. 
destroying all but a few of the chaos demons with the blaze that those witness to it described as a second sun appearing. The light faded slowly, leaving dark after images of the enemies burnt into the ground and surrounding rocky outcroppings, all seeming untouched by the ra righteous wrath of the light. Turning once more, Zero and his small team moved to pursue Iran, his contingent, into the Citadel. The staggering path of desolation was left in the wake of Iran's passage through the grounds. Once beautiful trees and artfully wrought sculptures were hideously disfigured, half melted, and scorched by the heat emanating from proximity to the forces of the underworld. Where ornate shrines once housed portions of the Citadel's light, only ashes and slag remained. Iran was systematically removing their connection to their source of light. The destruction followed a random but intelligent route, wiping out all of the shrines and inexorably choking off their light. A massive rumbling was felt, vibrating the very air around the small party of guardians with zero. Stunned, several cried out in confusion and despair as they lost the strength to continue. Another shrine had fallen to Iran and his forces, this time undoubtedly one of the larger shrines of the borders of the Citadel proper, where the amount of loss that was felt was significant. Zero called for those that could still fight to follow him, and taking to wing, he sprang into pursuit with haste. Mitigation of damage was foremost in his mind, for without the light, the Guardians could do nothing to stop the machinations of darkness. Flying at a breakneck pace, Zero sped like an arrow to his destination, the inner sanctum. This would be Iran's ultimate objective, as the light within the shrines was derived from the holiest of places in the Citadel. He began to see chaos demons aplenty, tearing into whatever bespoke flight along their mission to the center of the citadel. Several of his brethren plummeted to the ground as another shrine was swallowed into oblivion, their light all but extinguished. Half a score of the guardians accompanying Zero remained when he came hurtling down upon the thickest portion of visible demons like an angel of death. Finally releasing a portion of his full power and majesty, Zero gave the demons little chance to fight back, let alone escape his avenging gaze slaughtering as many as he could in the space of a single minute. He wiped out a sizable amount of the enemies and tasked his followers to contend with the rest. Skyward once again, he dove to find Iran and put an end to his evil before he could destroy the existence of the light in the world. Soon, he glimpsed the large and imposing from striding relentlessly through the final gate that led to the sanctum. It was the manifestation of evil, the harbinger of doom himself, approaching the final place of light in the citadel. Shouting a challenge, Zero announced his arrival to the scene. Iran slowed his approach long enough to glance behind at him, but did not pause, continuing to stride without hesitation to his final task. Iran began to blaze with inner hellfire in preparation to raise the source of light to nothingness and end the influence of the Guardians over the affairs of the world of mortals. Seething in fury at being ignored and terror at what was sure to occur, Zero attacked Iran head on wielding his spear in both hands to try and destroy his counterpart before the unthinkable happened. Unflinching, Aran withstood the blow and continued on his way down a small flight of stairs that shattered as he walked onwards. The force of Zero's attack caused an intense tremor such that all nearby were unable to stay on their feet. Fissures appeared around the two, ripping the gates from their places and casting them down with a resounding crash. Surprised that his spear had glanced off of the natural armor Aran was composed of, Zero took a moment to consider his options. Surely, there must be a way to at least halt his progress? He instinctively channeled a considerable amount of his light into his sidearm and fired at the center of Iran's figure. The light washed over Iran and caused him to roar in pain and anger, for it had pierced through his defenses and broken a piece of his armor. He finally stopped moving and turned to face his opponent with a wrathful look and spoke of the fire that lingered within his core. Aran began to counterattack, flames rising up around his arms as he struck with savage power, forcing Zero to retreat momentarily to gauge the situation for possible openings. Aran managed to connect with one blow and it sent Zero reeling backwards, setting him temporarily ablaze. Zero recovered with the battle cry that snuffed out the flames with the strength of his voice and charged a more powerful blast of light that grazed Aran's side, gouging a small chunk of armor and flesh as it passed by him. Had not been for Aran's unpredictable dodge, the light would have dealt serious damage and rendered him at a significant disadvantage. In response, the Harbinger began hurling fireballs with a furious tempo, not allowing Zero a second's respite, else he risked being burned alive. Over and over, Zero barely managed to escape the certain doom that was precariously within reach. Frustrated now, Aran slowed his fire slinging and began to channel his inner power. As master and commander of the underworld, all souls that found themselves under his dominion came forfeit to his will. These tortured spirits were now called back into the world of life against their own wills, being forced to add to the vitality and strength of their demonic liege lord. 
very air surrounding the combatants seemed to vibrate, humming with power as their rowing began to grow. His physical size and strength became enormous, and when the change had begun, a large area within a radius of him seemed to transfix everything around it. Jiro found that it became incredibly difficult to move, and was helpless before the Harbinger's advance. Ron thundered towards Zero and swept him up with both of his monstrous hands, holding him aloft, daring him to attempt to escape and continue the fight, snorting derisively at the weakness the servant of the hated light displayed now. He threw the archangel from him. Zero tumbled helplessly through the air and crashed into a pillar that supported the lofty dome ceiling of the sanctum. Unable to withstand the might of the throw, a section of the pillar crumbled into dust and shards of marble carved to capture and reflect the beauty of the light that shone despite the nearby turmoil. Stunned from this encounter, Zero could not move at all for several long seconds. Haran took this to mean he had defeated his last obstacle, and turned to summon up the immense amount of power required to put the light to utter ruination. While he lay on the elaborate floor of the sanctum, Zero despair, for all that had been sacrificed was soon to be for naught. A nail broke through his subconscious barriers and apologized for his next suggestion. Imagery flashed through Zero's thoughts, shared by his brother's presence within his mind. The nail was insisting that Zero expend all of his life energy in one massive attack of life, in order to make certain that Aram would be stopped. The Archangel stirred himself, reluctant to agree to the nail's proposed self-sacrifice. With an extraordinary effort, Zero regained his feet and fired a volley of condensed light from his weapon, targeting vital spots throughout the closet form that was ready to bring the world to darkness forever. The aim was true, the power of the light sufficient to destroy anything of darkness in its path. But Iran had become something else with his transformation. Something not just the spawn of Legion, but a manifestation of his own willpower to dominate all of life and an everlasting death. He shrugged off the light even though it would, wounded him minimally, and began the final stage of his preparation to end all hope. Raising one mighty arm, Iran brought forth flames from his domain in the underworld. Capable of incinerating anything it touched, gleefully his eyes radiated malevolence as he savored his moment of triumph. Soon, he would have everything he desired, and the light that had wounded him would be no more. Zero beheld this moment with horror, frozen in time and space as each instant stretched for an eternity within his tortured intellect. Conflicted, he considered every alternative, each more wildly imaginative and more improbable than before as his mind raced through to the inevitable conclusion. He would have to sacrifice his brother to save the world from its impending doom at the hands of Iran. His decision made, his dilemma concluded. He launched himself into the air with all the speed his body could bear. Swooping into a hard bank, Zero rebounded himself off another nearby support pillar and brought all his momentum to bear upon the figure that now raised the other arm to bring hellfire searing into the hollow sanctum. At the moment of impact, the Archangel completely released the entire sum of life energy he had gained when merging with his dying brother, slamming it mercilessly into the body of his greatest foe. The light did its work well, an immeasurable detonation of pure energy utterly consumed the form of Ron, bathing his existence in an unfathomable majesty that could not be withstood no matter how the demon writhed in efforts to escape judgment. Incensed, the harbinger of doom, gnashed his teeth in agony and cursed his arrogance at having ignored Zero multiple times, knowing that he should have finished off the Archangel when he was down. As his physical body dissolved slowly, fighting all the way, he brought his gaze to Zero. Aron glared with the full fury and hatred a servant of darkness has for a servant of the light, and at last, he was purged from the presence of the light. Zero felt as though a crushing weight had descended upon his very soul. Unable to cope with what he had just done, he was numb to the world for a time, feeling as though an integral part of himself was gone forever. In a way, this was true. The feeling of being complete he had attained when taking a nail's light was an indescribable joy he had not thought possible, and now that was lost for all of eternity. He looked at where Iran had been standing so close to plunging the world into darkness for a thousand million generations. Immense sorrow and regret welled up from within him, and he began to weep for the selfless acts of a nail and his other family that day pledging in his heart to honor them for as long as he held the breath of life. An apparition appeared before him during his time of grief. A nail spirit remained in the citadel for a fleeting moment, smiling sadly upon his brother. He reached out, the brothers mirroring each other, trying to grasp each other's arm one final time. As they would have touched, a nail faded away, dissipating into particles of the purest light Zero had ever seen aside from the place he had protected against a wrong. The particles coalesced into a single mass that drifted into the holy place, shimmering in concordance with the citadel's source of light, seeming to waver for just a second. 
light that was a nail blended with the light of kale. Once assimilated, a towering beam shot upwards, through an opening in the domed roof directly above. Sending a beacon of hope to those still embroiled in mortal combat, Zero had defeated Iran with the help of his brother and the grace of the light. Exiting the sanctum drained of his furor and wishing to join his fallen brethren, Zero threw himself into the remaining chaos demons with utter abandon, willing himself to take as many of them with him as he could. Daring the forces of darkness to face him, his visage was terrifying and vengeful, becoming like an angel of death. He sent many back to the abyss, exhausting every ounce of power he had left in an all-out attempt to honor the sacrifice of the Guardians. The Guardians had accompanied him to the Sanctum, were all dead or missing in action, save one stubborn defender that clung to life yet. The Archangel flew into a furious rage, slaying as fast as his body would allow him to. His ally fell at last, despite Zero's best efforts to protect him. He stopped for a moment to collect himself, and the white-hot anger morphed into a look of purely cold fury that cowed the enemy as they saw his face. As one, the demons broke ranks and fled from his calculating advance, each trying to escape the avenging Zero. The citadel is hardly recognizable, fire still burning in places, consuming much that once was beautiful and holy to those of the light. A stream of light hurls into the skies from the center of the once proud city, giving pause to all that see its glory. Arcing out from the sanctum, the light passes through each beleaguered guardian that struggles to repel the forces of darkness. The light and a nail are as one, winning their way through the battlefield, raising up those that collapsed when the shrines were destroyed, innervated. These guardians were on the brink of being overrun completely. Now they stand as one. Now Zero returns to the fray to command his forces of light. Now he is no longer alone. Kale witnessed everything to come to pass as he had foreseen it. Regrettably, there was much sacrifice before the end came in sight for his guardians. So many of the humans had been turned into those twisted abominations to be thrown as so much a foal into battle to prepare the way for Iran and his demons. Kale knew that by placing the citadel on the surface of the world, he himself had been inviting this battle to take place. And he took a moment to feel deeply compassionate for all the souls that had been lost during the conflict. Many of humanity had fallen, never to return to their forms, never to behold the light again in their eternal servitude to the harbinger of doom, master of the underworld and leader of Legion's forces. The God of Light knew all of this would happen and had allowed it. It was a necessary conflict to allow the chance for true balance to exist. For either side would not be able to truly comprehend that they needed each other until they had fought to conquer completely. Without light, shadow may not exist. Without darkness, the light has nothing to contrast with. He reasoned that the war would continue to rage on as long as existence lasted, and that checks and balances must be put into place and agreed upon to maintain the proper balance. Thus it was that Kale restored the citadel in all its glory and transported it elsewhere, fixing it, it high into the clouds of the world's skies. Never in the same location, the majesty and power of the citadel and the guardians would be able to literally watch over the mortals' lives from above. Always ready to defend against large-scale invasions by Iran and his forces, yet removed enough from the day-to-day -day lives of mortals to allow them the freedom to choose their own destinies. For his scale had created them with free will, so they must determine the proper course to take and recognize the need for balance in all things without his guidance. He granted Zero a portion of the power he had gained when emerging with Nail, to better allow his champion to protect against more full-scale invasions by Legion and Iran. In honor of Zero's resolute will, he bequeathed upon him a new title befitting his position, Herald of Light. Wherever Zero went, he proclaimed the majesty of the light and the wondrous beauty of the chance to choose it freely without being forced. He became a symbol of hope, perhaps even more recognizable than the citadel itself, and was known for his deeds in defeating Iran and ending the Age of Terror. He continued to challenge every incursion by Iran's demons, forcing them to lurk into the shadows to tempt their mortal prey into choosing darkness over light. No longer would the war seize such large-scale battles as the one for the Citadel's existence, for Zero had become not only powerful, but also experienced enough to be capable of vanquishing Iran every time he attempted to physically manifest in the world to lead his armies again. Zero was gladdened by the new age of peace that had descended upon the world, but could never quite shake the feeling that a part of him was missing. Whenever the melancholy took him, he would go into the sanctum and speak to the light that had assimilated his brother, hoping for a sign that a nail could hear him from beyond the veil. Kale had seen fit to make a nail's essence remain within the light that resided at the sanctum, to guide Zero and help him retain a measure of peace. 
Despite never receiving a response from his brother's spirit, he always felt better for visiting and came out refreshed every time he went to the light with his troubles. Leading the guardians was not so much issuing orders, but showing them the way of light and everything that he did, becoming a living example for all to emulate in the pursuit of living a good life. The herald knew that even with his new power and the guidelines to prevent the destruction of reality itself, Legion would continue to send Iran to get revenge for his defeat. Many more battles were to come, and many were the fallen from the first of them. Yet Zero was confident that the rigorous training he was putting his guardians through was sufficiently prepare them to repel Iran again and again. Working together was a paramount importance, and never again would he witness his family separated from each other to perish in horrible ways. Never again would they be caught unawares, establishing guard posts upon the known portals into the physical world to send warning when invasion inevitably came again. And come again it would, for the balance is always shifting, and the clash of souls was fated to last for all eternity.